Hey everyone, hope you're well. So it's a new month, it's a new year, everything kind of seems the same, doesn't it? But today I'm going to go through my portfolio, all the changes that I've made over the last month and the impacts they'll have on my portfolio, as well as go over all the dividends that I've been paid out and a few more bits of information that might be of interest to you. So sit down, grab a drink and let's go through it. Hey everyone, thanks for sticking around, my name's Ben. So today I wanted to go over the changes for my portfolio and what's happened over the last month, but also kind of touch a little bit first on the companies I buy and as to why I buy them. Primarily the strategy I'm using is dividend investing. I have picked up a couple of growth companies, but due to the value drop during the pandemic, however, majority of my companies I'm buying as the intention to reclaim the dividends from them to reinvest into other companies. So my main reason for this is I see it as a better way of actually reclaiming money from the companies. Rather than me having to dilute my position and sell shares to reclaim money, they actually pay me out on a monthly quarterly or yearly basis. So therefore, my main job is to find companies that I think will continue to grow and do well in the future, invest into them with them paying back on a monthly, quarterly or yearly basis, which can then go into new companies, which then can do the exact same thing. And in theory, every month, quarter or year, they'll pay out a set amount and I can use that eventually to live off in many and many a years. I'm obviously nowhere near there now. The idea behind it is that I can use the dividend payments I get to buy more companies that will pay dividends, causing a snowball effect and hopefully exponential growth within my portfolio. In the future, I eventually want to get to the point that I can use some of that money to subsidise my living allowance. So therefore, I don't have to work as many hours or I can focus on more things that I enjoy. That way, I can focus more on other avenues instead of just my job. I can look at other things like improving YouTube, improving things like this. And hopefully, if you've got any feedback for me, please comment below. But that's enough of me rambling. So bear with me two seconds while I load up my ISA and we can have a look at the changes of my portfolio. Moving over to my ISA, due to the way that I actually fund my account and the way that I buy my shares, it's probably going to be more useful to show you the shares that I actually bought in December, which have then led to payouts in January and February, as opposed to the shares that I actually bought in January. Obviously, this means that I'll be going over the shares that I bought in January in next month's video, so make sure you come back for that. And if you're really interested, I do weekly stock news, where I also include a running update on what I've bought and sold for my portfolio. So moving over to December and the purchases that I made, there were 14 transactions that I made in regards to buying more shares throughout the month. So for starters we have GlaxoSmithKline ticker symbol GSK. In total I bought two shares for £27.86. We also have Ultria ticker symbol MO that I picked up 0.4 of a share for 12 57 Another 0.4 of a share this time for Pepsi ticker symbol PEP and we spent a total of £43.75 on that. Half a share of Store Capital, ticker symbol STOR, for a total of £24.76. I also managed to wrangle three shares of Royal Mail, ticker symbol RMG, for a total of £10.06p. We have Store Capital again, where I picked up a further 0.3 of a share for £7.46. We also have Gains Workshop, ticker symbol GAW, one of my favourite companies. I buy a lot of stuff from them, and this time I bought 0.4 shares for a total of £42.49. Once again, we have Store Capital where I picked up 0.2 of a share for just shy of a fiver. I picked up one and a half shares of PPL, whose ticker symbol, believe it or not, is PPL, and I picked that up for £29.54. I picked up a cheeky one share of Stag Industrial, ticker symbol Stag, S-T-A-G, for a total of £23.37p. Now, I do promise we are near the end of the list now, but we also have a Little More Ultria, where I picked up 0.6 of a share for £18.69. Then we have our recurrent favourite for the month, which is Store Capital, where I picked up 0.5 of a share for just shy of £12.60. For my penultimate purchase of the month, we have Cardinal Health, who I was just shy of a share with 0.9 of a share for £35.95p. And finally, we have CVS Health, ticker symbol CVS, and I picked up 0.6 of a share for a total of £29.92. And that rounds off all the purchases I made throughout December, ready to pick up dividends throughout January and February. So in total, I spent £294.65p on shares throughout December. However, I will point out that some of that money would have been coming into it in January, but I got paid early from my work due to Christmas, so it went in in December rather than in January. More importantly is the actual effect that it's going to have in my portfolio as a whole, and primarily on my dividend return on an annual basis. So now I'm going to introduce the spreadsheet that I use to track all of my purchases, incoming payments, and everything like that. So if we look at the expected dividend payouts of the companies that I've bought throughout the month, we'll see that in theory I've gained £10.49's worth of yearly dividends. This would bring my roughly yearly estimate up to around £87.35p, 
which I know it sounds low, but for the sake of sleeping and making 87 pound, I can't really argue for. So on that note, it's probably a good time to move over to the dividends that I've received throughout the month of January. So looking over my portfolio and the dividend returns that I've had throughout the month, we can see that I actually received 20 paydays essentially. The first payday was actually from PPL who paid out 13 pence for the half a share that I currently hold. We have a sister law who due to me holding 0.1 of a share of, I got a whole seven pence. Broadcom paid out 23p for the 0.1 share that I own. We have Walmart who came in near the bottom with a full two pennies. However, I do only hold 0.05 of a share, so can't really hold that against them. After that, we have Bunzel who came in with 16p for the one share that I own. Pepsi also kindly sent me 16p as well for the one share of theirs that I own. Eastman Chemicals paid out nine pence for the 0.2 of a share that I own. For holding a total of 1.4 shares of Ultria, I acquired 75 pence. And of a similar vein, we have Philip Morris who paid a total of 15p for holding 0.2 of a share. Cardinal Health kept the health of my portfolio going with a full 30p for holding one share. We have Main Street Capital, a nice monthly payer who paid out a total of 64p this month for the five shares that I hold. Then coming in at the lowest dividend payout this month is the Lonely 1p from Medtronic, though to be fair, I do only own 0 0.02 of a share, so I can't really complain. Another few monthly payers, with the first one being Realty Income, who paid out 44p for the three shares that I hold followed by Pembina Pipeline, who paid out 21p for the two shares that I hold of theirs. Then we also have Stag Industrial, who paid out a total of 30p for holding four shares of theirs. Store Capital sent over a nice 45p for holding two shares of the company. GlaxoSmithKline, or GSK, sent across 38p for holding two shares, and I've purchased a few more of them as well. And coming in the last week of the month, I managed to net an extra 97p. This was 45p from Cisco Systems for holding two shares. 36p from Gaines Workshop for holding 0.6 shares and finally Simon Property Group for owing 0.2 shares they paid out 16p. So in total for January my portfolio pulled in £5.68 which is the highest return that I've had in my portfolio so far. I am hoping to grow that number every month though I'm expecting a couple of shortfalls now and then. So in total this brings the full amount of returns of dividends that I've made in my portfolio to £25.19p. Now, the other thing that we can look over is also the change in my actual portfolio value and return for my portfolio. Overall, on the 30th of December, my portfolio sat at £1,991.23p. This means there was a total gain on my portfolio of 4.21%, which equates to £80.39. However, at the end of January, my portfolio was at £2,072.30 with a return of £28.40 which is only 1.39%. Overall, I'm not particularly bothered by this. The main reason for that is that I have no intention of selling my shares anytime soon. So it doesn't really affect me at this precise moment in time. Now, moving back to my spreadsheet. This is a spreadsheet that I've built and it's still a little bit work in progress. It's not particularly quite there yet, but it is useful for me just to track the progress of my portfolio and also the companies that I'm looking into. So on this spreadsheet, I have a list of all the companies that I'm looking to invest in potentially or already invest in. And it contains some key metrics such as their estimated dividend payments, their ex-dividend dates and their dividend dates. These are all estimates based from various different sources, but I've compiled them just to give me a rough guide on what's happening month to month with my portfolio and it also breaks down my diversity ratio and tells me what portion of my portfolio is with what company. If you're interested in the spreadsheet uh, please comment below let me know I'll look at either making a video of how I built it or I will just finesse it slightly and then post links so that anyone can access it if they want it. But from that there is some information that I thought I would share with you that might be of use if you are looking to either invest in potentially some dividend paying companies or if you just like to know potential upcoming dates and estimates of dates. As we can see from the spreadsheet there is around 20 28 companies that are due to go ex-dividend dates in February. Some of these have now passed unfortunately, but I thought I'd include all of them so that we have a broad picture on what's going on. Generally, I will look about a month to two months ahead with ex-dividend dates and see if there's any suitable companies that I can actually buy that are paying their dividends sooner rather than later. My main reason for this is the sooner they pay their dividend, the sooner that I can reallocate that to another company. It's kind of like my reasoning on why sometimes having a company that pays every month is better than a company that pays once a year, though I do understand some of the other arguments and I'm going to address that in a future video. But as I said, this is just gonna be a guideline. It's companies that I can look at knowing they're paying soon and then what I'll do is broaden my horizons if I don't see a company that I particularly wanna buy at the time. But working down the list, we can see that on the fourth, there are three companies that have ex-dividend dates. 
this being Intel with an estimated payout of 25p per share, Wells Fargo with an estimated 10p per share and Norfolk Southern with an estimated 10p per share. The following day on the 5th we had Apple with a estimated 17p payment and also WW Granger with an estimated £1.15 payout per share. So moving on to the companies that are paying their dividends from this week going forward from when the video is posted, these are the ones we kind of care about a little more because we can actually get into the positions before the ex-dividend date. So let's move over and see what we've got. In total, there are eight companies, and on the 9th, we have Yum Brands paying out an estimated 36p per share. On the 10th, we have Walgreens Boots Alliance with an estimated 35p per share, and also ExxonMobil with a 66p per share. Again, we have two companies with the date of the 11th, this being 3M and BP. 3M have an anticipated payment of £1.9p with BP paying out 4p a share. On the 12th, we have Amgen with an anticipated £1.21 per share, along with Health Peak Properties with an estimated 28p per share. And finishing off that week, we have Chevron with an estimated 97p per share payment. Moving over to the week of the 15th, the ball starts rolling on the 16th, where we have Target paying out a total 51p per share. Then on to the 17th, where we have Microsoft with a 42p per share payment. We also have Discovery Financial Services with a 33p per share payout. The 18th looks to be a busy one with a total of four companies with ex dividend dates on that day. We have GSK who will be paying out 19p per share, followed by Royal Dutch Shell with 12p per share. Visa are estimated to pay about 27p per share. And finally, to close out the week, we have Raytheon Technologies who are paying 36p per share. And now we're on to the last leg of the journey with the week of the 22nd. We have Johnson & Johnson with an estimated 75p per share. On the 24th, we have Pembina Pipeline with a 12p payment. There are four companies due to go X on the 25th. These being Stag Industrial with a 9p payment, Main Street Capital with a 15p per share payment, Dominion Energy with an estimated 48p payout, and rounding off the day, we have Union Pacific with 79p per share. Then for the final day of the month, we have McDonald's with an estimated £1.2p per share payment, and also Realty Income with an estimated 19p per share. So that's a list of the companies that are due to go X in the next month or so. Obviously, these figures are just estimates. Most of them have been confirmed by declarations from the company. However, I may not have managed to keep on top of every single one of them. So make sure, as always, you do your own research and you know what you're buying into and when they're due to pay out. So that's a list of all the companies that I track that are going X dividend next month. Obviously, it's useful if you want to slip into these positions prior to the dividends getting paid. Obviously, you need to be in the positions before this date to be able to acclaim those. Again, I do have to make sure that you're aware that these are just estimates of payments. They're not exactly precise, so there may be a slight amount of fluctuation, but it is a good way to gauge what you're expected to get. However, if you know a better way of doing it than working it out manually, please do let me know. So sticking with the spreadsheet, let's have a quick look over of my portfolio in a whole and the changes that I've made and what differences it will make. So looking at my forecast for the following month, we can see that based on a linear progression of my current portfolio dividend payments, we would expect to see around £6 as a payment from the portfolio if it grows steadily every month. Unfortunately, if we do the maths on the anticipated payments that are coming out in February, we work out and see that we actually only have around £4.10 p's worth of payments coming in. As I said, these are only guideline prices, so there might be some fluctuation, but I don't really see a total of £2 popping out of nowhere unless there's a late payer that hasn't been accounted for. So slightly bad news that we're not going to see the increasing trend and not meet the trend line point that we wanted to meet. However, I am aware that a linear trend line isn't necessarily the best way of gauging this, but it's something that I can use because unfortunately I don't have enough data for exponential growth trend lines. On the other hand, there is a little bit of potential good news coming from this because if we forecast forward an extra month, we would look to see that in March we'd be expected to make around £6.50. However, when we factor in what we're expecting to actually get paid from our previously bought shares, we're looking at more of a return around £8.50. So overall, I'm relatively happy with that. If we were to knock a pound off or two pound off and put it the other way, we'd roughly be on point for what we want. So as an average, I'm happy with the return. It's just sad to see that one month drip down. But then again, it may not. We need to watch and see what happens. So obviously make sure you come back next month or keep up to date with me weekly just to make sure we know what's going on. And that's kind of it with my portfolio and the changes over the month. Obviously, I don't know if there's anything additional you want to see. I will quickly flash up some images and things like that around the amount of ratios and where my company and weightings are and things like that. However, if you want to let me know if there's anything particular you want to see in these videos in future, do let me know. 
I do keep a running total of all of my weekly payments and everything like that on my stock news videos. I tag it at the end of that. So make sure you check them out for a running weekly total. My main intention here is to essentially bring you on the journey with me. This is something that I quite enjoy doing. And I know there's a lot of people that were like me before I started where you kind of have the feeling that it's not worth doing. You've only got 50 pound a month, 100 pound a month or something like that. But I want to show you that it is always worth doing. If you've got the money and you're not going to use it in the next year or so, I would recommend doing it. Obviously, I'm not a financial advisor, so do everything with your own caution. And if you happen to have a financial advisor, you should probably be listening to them. But I imagine they would say something along the same lines as investing for your future is always good for your future. And that's it. This one is more casual um, rather than trying to make sure that I've got concise information so that you guys have everything you need. I've managed to just mumble bumble my way through this. So let me know what you think. Please, any feedback is appreciated. We are nearly at 20 subscribers, which for me is astounding. I can't believe that there's more than two people that I haven't forced into watching these videos that would actually sit and listen to me talk for more than 30 seconds. So I really appreciate your time. And if you wouldn't mind sharing, liking, subscribing, getting out there and let's see if we can push some higher targets and hopefully we can get some more people making more money and we can reduce the imbalance of poor to rich. Anyway, I'll let you get on with your Saturday. So have a good rest of the weekend. Goodbye.